let's create a 3D point cloud from a set of 2D images in the shortest time possible. So first we will get our hands onto what we need to do that. So the first thing is you need a camera, all right? So I have that here, very nice. The second thing is I need an object to reconstruct. So that is a little tiny oil plant that I'm going to use. And I'm placing it in front of me. Then I need a computer like the one that you are seeing right now with a pretty decent GPU um, having CUDA. All right, so an NVIDIA GPU. And finally, you need two open source software. The first one is Cloud Compare, just to visualize outside of the second software, which is Meshroom, which will be used to compute the 3D model. Once you have all of this, it's time for the experiment. So the first thing that I'm going to do is spin on my camera and then take a bunch of pictures at more or less the same distance from the object. Once that is done, I just export my SD card in my case, which I will then plug to my computer, right? So that's my SD card, which I will plug to my computer. Now in my computer, in my USB port, I plug my SD card and I explore what I have. And this is all of my pictures. I have an RAF file, which is the raw file from my camera, which is a Fuji and the JPEG image. For now, let's just take the JPEG images. Um, between 5 to 10 will be okay, at more or less the same distance from one another, all right? And I will copy that, I will create a new folder into my images folder, I will create a folder called all, and I will drop all of my images within this folder. So now I have all of my images. The next stage is to download Meshroom from the website. So you go into your navigator and you tap Meshroom, right? And you choose Meshroom. From there, you go into the download section and you take the distribution for your OS. The download starts automatically and you download it at the place where you want it to have it. Great. Once the download is finished, you open the folder where you have your Meshroom, you extract it and it will create a folder like this. For now, I will spin it up just like this. So I double click, uh, double -click on Meshroom.exe and it will open the software Meshroom. Now, within this GUI, I'm just going to open the folder where I have my images, like here, select all my images, drag and drop it here. And I can already close that. Great, so you see that we have all our images that are here. We, when we select an image, it's displayed here, and we have the metadata information just attached to each image, right? This little logo here means that, fine, we have the sensor width and the focal length found in the EXIF metadata of your camera. And below you have a graph view, all right, with different nodes that are actually compute nodes that will compute for you the 3D model. So the first thing you do, you select the Structure for Motion node and you click on Compute. For now, I continue without saving. This is like the most raw attempt to get the 3D model. After what looks like to be 30 seconds, I see at the bar that everything is green. So now my Structure for Motion is finished. And as you can see here, I have all of my cameras, which I position in a world space, right? And we have a sparse point cloud that starts to show out and looks pretty nice already. So that's the first stage. Now, what we are going to do is actually for each image, compute the correspondence with each pixel of the matching images to create a dense recon reconstruction from which we extract a 3D mesh. So for that, just two clicks. First, you select the last node, texturing, right click and compute. Continue without saving and same thing, we wait until this bar go all the way. And now the computation is finished and we can explore our texturing by double clicking on the texturing node to see what we get. And as you can see, I will hide the previous one. We have our texture node, which looks already pretty nice. But now our idea is to export the dense point cloud. So for that, you can zoom in a bit inside of your graph editor, right click utils and create a node which is called SFM transform, right? Now we are going to the meshing node and on the right side, you go on to filter attribute and you have the advance, which is checked. Very good, so that we see all the advanced parameters. There are some parameters that you need to check. The first one being save raw dense point cloud, and the second one is colorize output. Once both of them are checked, you can just take this node and link it here, right click on the SFM transform, Sorry, it's, it's not an SFM transform node, it's a utils. 
convert SFM format. That is what you need to create. And once you made all the parameters inside the meshing node, you just click here and link it to the input. And on the convert SFM format, what you want to export is just the unknown type and the file format PLY. And you right click on the node compute and it will compute your dense point cloud export in a PLY file format. Now the computation is finished, so we can click on our convert SFM node and just take the path here and open our file with Cloud Compare. In Cloud Compare, when you load the data, you have that XYZ RGB. I apply all, and as you can see, this is now the point cloud that we got out of our 3D reconstruction methodology. Pretty nice. So the last stage that we need to do is actually to filter out right our point cloud so first we see that we have the pose of the camera so i take my point cloud and i will select all that and this will constitute camera poses right now i take my remaining point cloud and i can filter out a bit my point cloud if i would like to so what i need to do now is rotate from there but take everything to rotate everything at the same time i'm in a top view so i click on rotate and i rotate my full point cloud with a top view which will be more or less like this all right and now i will make a second rotation but this time only around the z-axis to have something a bit more um, nicer to have and then i select my point cloud and i filter out i cut out the point that i do not need which will be for example here i will take something or something even a bit more like this which is now my Oil point cloud, very nice. Okay, and the last thing that you can do is maybe separate the ground from the all, right? So I will go in this specific side view. I will select what belong mostly to the ground. That will be my first stage. And here I will go like this and I will select the remaining element from here as well. But this time with a polygonal tool, And this will constitute my ground. So I merge both of them and that will be my oil, all right? So the ground, let's say with the oil, I duplicate them, the ground, I will colorize it with a color, which would be, for example, this color and the oil, I will colorize it with, let's say a green color. And I will apply an eye dot lightning to it and the last stage that I'm going to do is actually to create a rendering with specific point of view. So this will be the first point of view. This will be the second point of view. And this will be my first point, third point of view. I select them and I will animate it. As you can see from here, I will render for something that is four seconds. And I will create a preview to see what it will do. I really like the movement. So the last thing that I'm doing is actually called 3D reconstruction quick dirty. And I render that for four seconds with a smooth ratio. And the export is finished, the animation is full. So what I can do is go in my folder where I have all my animation and look at the final result. I will double click on my file and see my result. Pretty cool, huh? Of course, as you can see, it's really something that has a lot of defect at this stage. It's perfectly normal. I just wanted to show you how quickly you can spit out a 3D model out of a bunch of pictures, which was a really small batch without paying anything else for software and such. Um, last thing that I still want to emphasize on, I measured the distance between the eyes of my all, which is 2.5 centimeters. And I want to show you what we have here. So if I were to take, um, for example, my oil, and take the distance between both of my eyes, which will be there and there. I have a distance of 22 centimeters, which is perfectly normal. We didn't put any constraint on the scale and orientation of our 3D model. That is for another episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel or leave a comment about what you would like me to target next. I'm trying my best to push things that are useful and actionable so that you can understand, build and deploy 3D tech for your next project. In the meantime, have fun, play around with that. The follow-up is going to come in the next video. Bye-bye.